Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the G-Shock Watcher and welcome to this second retrospective on G-Shock Watches. Today, I want to talk about this particular watch. This is the G-Shock Rangeman. And I've had some fun taking this G-Shock Rangeman on tour, most recently down to Western Australia, to Perth, where I have actually been in hot air balloons. I've actually been driving. I've been swimming with whale sharks in the water. I've really been able to put this watch through its paces. And somebody asked me at some point, and that's why I was looking at this watch, could you look at doing a retrospective on the range man and its background? And I thought, hey, why not? It's a great story. People love the G-Shock range man. They love it for its ruggedness, its extreme designs, uh, its varied designs that have come on the market. There's a huge number of collaborations and special editions, and it's had a very interesting evolution. It's kind of gone through three generations overall. The generation one, which is what I'm sporting here. The second generation, which was probably more uh, integrated with GPS coordinates and the current generation of Rangeman that we see today. So in this retrospective, we're going to look at the G-Shock Rangeman. Now, some may or may not know, but the G-Shock Rangeman evolved from another product line called the G-Shock Riseman, which was introduced in 1997. This model of watch was called the DW9100BJ and it had a very unique design. This watch had two sensors built in, which provided data for atmospheric pressure, altitude and temperature. The name Riseman, as Casio states it, refers to the man closest to the sun. Personally, I think the first design was very jarring, but it evolved over time up to 2013, where it became something a little more akin or alike to what we know as the first generation range man today. Now, Casio released the first Rangeman in October 2013, and its model number was the GW9400-1. And when they launched this watch, it was very specifically targeting an extreme audience of users. As such, the marketing states, it is worn by rangers providing disaster relief and mountain rescue services while working in extreme conditions from wading through swamps to scaling steep mountains. Those are some pretty extreme conditions. Now, aligned to that target audience and role, this was the first watch that incorporated a triple sensor, which included a compass, a barometer for pressure and altitude, and a temperature sensor. Now, I had thought the Mudmaster range would have been the first to include this sensor array. However, they did not receive the triple sensor until the release of the GWG1000-1A in August 2015. Now that's a full year and a bit after the release of the Rangeman. Now in addition to the triple sensor, it also included other outdoor features such as the ability to get the sunrise and sunset data for the home city you're in. And this data is preloaded into the watch and is captured for every longitude and latitude coordinates until approximately 2099 which I am sure I am not going to be around to be able to validate. So I'm going to take Casio at their word. Now, coming back to the basics, the watch itself is in a resin band and it weighs in around about 93 grams with dimensions close to equal in height and width of around 55 millimeters with a thickness of 18.2 millimeters. The watch also sports the features we love, including tough solar and multiband six, with mud resistance and water resistance down to 200 meters. And on the topic of resistance, this watch really is built for the harsh conditions with a temperature range down to minus 10 degrees Celsius and a measuring range from minus 700 meters to 10,000 meters in altitude. And for all of those features that I'll probably never, ever, ever use, the G-Shock Rangeman was certainly no slouch in the looks department either. The first release of the G-Shock Rangeman on the Shockbase website showcases 32 variations of this release. 
Some of them are going to be obviously releases for Western markets and some are going to be for the Japanese markets. But have a listen to some of these variations you'll actually see. Most of these watches will sport the crazy bobcat on the back plate. However, they do include variations that mix up the different colors and have different back plates. So as a few examples, there are some national services collaborations for these uh, range bands. There's a camo green unit in conjunction with the Portuguese Protection Force unit from their Air Force, which sported a unique band holder with the logo of Ares, the God of War. There's an orange watch in conjunction with the Kobe City Fire Bureau with their logo on the back plate. An emergency fire response team edition with three agencies represented in Japan on the back plate. A Hong Kong fire services department with a customized back plate with the logo. Personally, this one is one of my favorites. And a Pompiers de Paris edition, which is obviously for the Paris Fire Brigade. So there's some awesome collaborations here with a whole lot of the rescue services of many countries around the world. But in addition, there's also one last collaboration with Burton, a snowboard manufacturer, and they have a almost stormtrooper-esque looking watch with the Burton logo on the back plate as well. Now, in addition to the collaborations, there's also some very special additions as well. These will actually include a 30th anniversary lightning yellow, a men in sunrise purple. There are multiple master of G-men in camouflage watches. There's one for desert. There is one for dark green camo. Uh, there's a blackout, which is pretty much about as black as you can go. Everything is black, black, black in this particular watch, hence the blackout phrase. There's the yellow accents. Now, this is the watch I actually own, the, the Yellow Accents Range Man. And what's hilarious about this is my wife believes it's the perfect watch to go with the uniform for Scoot Airways, which we took recently down to Perth. And you can see that in the picture here. And then finally, there are a few Love the Sea and Earth collaborations. And this is a collaboration that Casio does with the G-Shock lines quite often in terms of their support of environmental causes. And some of these watches are really, really cool. They've got an awesome backplate which highlights people and animals and whales and trees and oceans and all these things coming together. So they've replaced the bobcat with this beautiful motif of uh, the environment and all these different people. But the watch colors are pretty amazing. Take a listen. We've got dark gray with red, dark green with light green, yellow with dark blue, light blue and a lighter blue, coral and light green, brown and orange, a lime green and a bone white. So with all of these different watches and different collaborations, I can totally understand why people love to be able to hunt down these range mans for all of their unique uh, colors and styles and things like that. The features... They've all stayed the same. But the way those watches are presented, the extreme colors, the history in terms of their support of rescue services and fire services is absolutely spectacular. Now, the second generation of Rangeman, the GPRB 1000, was then released a little over four years later in April 2018 and really stepped up the features and the technology. This release introduced the capability for solar assisted GPS navigation, a standalone navigation system that enabled the watch to track the route taken by the user by recording the track taken with a four second or one minute duration, collecting this data into a log. This then also enabled the user to activate a backtrack feature that would give the user general directions on how to get back to a registered starting point. Now, setting starting points and goals on a watch isn't the most effective, so Casio introduced a smart app that you could run on your phone to help you set this information up. Then, of course, you need some way to communicate between watch and phone. So, of course, Bluetooth was introduced in this release. Now, this app gave you a lot of flexibility and control in routes. In addition, it also had a cool way to turn the, the two-dimensional top-down map that you were using to plot the routes into a 3D map 
which gave you satellite information with a view of the rising hills, including the weather and cloud cover. And a big thanks to the gigazine.net website to help me get some of these pictures. Now, this new communication approach enabled some interesting capabilities outside just setting and communicating route information, but it also enabled you to take photos along the way that would be captured along your route. In addition, you could send coordinates, barometric information, and more. With all this new technology, solar power could only go so far. So the backplate itself was replaced with a ceramic case, which helped to not only get a higher sensitivity GPS tracking, but also enabled wireless charging, which became essential for the higher battery life consuming features. It was purported that you could get GPS utilization for 33 hours on five hours of wireless charging. And if it was depleted, you could try and recharge the watch in bright light. However, GPS would only work for an hour with four hours of solar charging. Wireless charging necessitated a USB connected charging cable and that was connected to a big red cradle that your watch would sit on top of. Now, in terms of additional capabilities of this watch, it increased the temperature resistance down to minus 20 degrees Celsius, a reduction of another 10 degrees, and it added tide and moon phase data and had an improved display. However, it traded this for increased weight and dimensions. The weight of the watch went from 93 grams to 142 grams, and dimensions were increased by about 5 millimeters on almost all the measures. Now, in terms of variations of watches in this range, they'd actually reduced the variations down from 32 to just 5. And outside of the primary model, there were three variations. The first one being a special edition, which was for the 35th anniversary watch from the Magna Ocean Collection. It was kind of cool. It was a black, red, and rose gold look. The second was a special edition Team Land Cruiser Toyota edition, which sported a bright blue, red, and silver look. And finally, a special edition with the Portugal Air Force Search and Rescue called Resco Unit Esquadra 751 in honor of their 40th anniversary. Now, I am sure I got that wrong, but I apologize to the forces on that one. Now, all credit to Casio on the work they did with this second edition of the Rangeman, but they still went ahead and listened directly to the customers that they were serving, the rescue services, the people who utilized the Rangeman. And what they heard from their customers was they still needed a larger display and they needed to be able to see the data at a moment's notice. And this is what led Casio to build the GPR H1000. The GPR H1000 is the current model range man we see today. And in terms of models, Casio has shrunk the selection down even more to just two. A dark green edition and a very striking yellow edition. And why we only have two there's plenty more time for more collaborations and special editions come out. In fact, this watch only came out at the beginning of the year. So with a couple more iterations, I'm sure we'll see collaborations with different services and special editions coming out. Casio calls this new model of Rangeman the completion of the transition to a new generation of Master of G Land series of watches, both in terms of exterior looks and features. This version of the watch incorporated a larger display screen and an improved memory in pixel or MIP LCD that delivers higher visibility even in direct sunlight. Now what is impressive about this release is that even while incorporating new features and a bigger display, the watch itself is one gram lighter than the first edition Rangeman at 92 grams versus 93 grams. It is also narrower than the second edition range man at 53.2 millimeters versus 57.7 millimeters. The only place it exceeds its predecessor is in height by 0.3 millimeters and in depth by 0.1 millimeters. Some of the design elements that were incorporated based on the feedback of rescue services was interesting. One of which stated that the watch should not damage the in-vehicle equipment or the rescue targets. So to address that, they incorporated urethane outer bezel covers on the watch and a forged and molded mud resist button guard at the nine o'clock, 
while a metal guard sits on the three o'clock. All of this to protect against mud-soaked environments or pounding ocean waves. This release also introduces heart rate monitors and step trackers, so that meant the incorporation of more sensors into the watch. And anyone with a watch that measures things like heart rate knows that you need a light sensor that is right up close to your skin. So this meant the Bobcat logo had to be moved from the back plate to a position where the watch case and band meet. Finally, they had to also continue the use of a USB battery charger due to all of the incremental features. Fortunately, it's not as big as the last one and more of a magnetized latch. Battery life, if you're using all of the features, would last you about 14 hours as per the website statistics. It is stated, based on some of the materials, that a USB charge should give you a full battery within two hours. Some of the other incremental features in this watch include workout routines and notifications for things such as email. And with the introduction of these features, you get a sense that Casio is really trying to go after a market which is already dominated by smartwatches such as Apple and Garmin and almost less on the first audience, those that were in the emergency services. However, I'm sure that these features can be turned off. So wrapping it up, the Rangeman is definitely not my first G-Shock watch. In fact, it's definitely not going to be my last G-Shock watch either, uh, unless the wife finds out about me buying too many G-Shock watches. But I kind of feel with the Rangeman line, has G-Shock or Casio for that matter, lost its way? It has started to incorporate a lot more of the features that, you know, high technology companies are starting to come out with. You know, you've got higher resolution displays and Apple Watch is working on those things. We've got technologies in terms of uh, battery life, which Oppo Watch X has actually brought in by having two processors on the, uh, the watch itself to be able to handle different tasks and extend battery life. All of these sorts of features, all the things that are coming into the Rangeman series, the ability to get email notifications, to be able to go ahead and track your, your fitness level, are these necessarily the features, the core features that these sorts of rescue services are looking for? What is it that Rangeman can do? Should the Rangeman line go back to focusing on those niche features for those sorts of rescue services. And if they do, does that mean that their target market becomes a lot smaller and they're going to have to give up on their market goals for penetration? Casio is not a small company. They need to go ahead and actually meet revenue targets like anybody else does. So going after a niche market, especially the rescue services, may not yield the financial outcomes they're actually looking for. Now, another thing they could look at doing is maybe looking at how they might enhance the a Casio app to provide more features and capabilities. In fact, what's interesting, I kind of feel that what I saw with the Casio app for the second generation of Rangeman watches looks a bit cooler and more feature complete than what the current Casio watch app actually looks like for Rangeman as well. Now, the Rangeman has every opportunity to succeed. It has great technology. It's got great credibility. It's super durable. It's got solar charging, a whole range of different things that other watches don't have. But it feels like it's trying to be everything to everyone. For me, I love my first generation G-Shock watch. And after doing this retrospective and looking at all the different G-Shocks, uh, well, at least Rangemans that are out there, I kind of want to hunt down more. I'd love to be able to grab that Hong Kong fire services watch, that triple uh, emergency services watch from Japan. There's some incredible heritage and history of what these watches actually offered. And I kind of hope that G-Shock and Casio go back to that sort of heritage about really building watches that are targeted towards those rescue services. But hey, I'm not an expert. I'm just somebody who loves G-Shock watches. So I hope you've enjoyed this retrospective on the Rangeman. You've learned a little bit about the history from the Riseman to the three different editions or releases of Rangeman. And I hope you get the opportunity to try one out as well. It's a great watch. It's super comfortable and I really enjoy wearing it. Thank you so much for joining me.